Welcome to Shelf Starters. I'm Rosie. And I'm Kate. Hi, everyone. And today we're doing the third book of The Fairy Queen, um, which is the last book that we're going to be covering for The Fairy Queen before we do the mutability cantos, which was, yeah, the last bits he couldn't really fit into any books because he didn't finish. I think he might have plum died of exhaustion. <laughs> so <laughs> there's so much going on in It's a lot going on. I mean, look oh. how much I've, like, I ended up tabbing when I started I, tabbing. Yeah. Just, full of stuff there so will, it, the think. illusions are you know the characters and the illusions are so 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 rich and dense that you have to keep flicking back and looking things up and you know oh well I do anyway or I lose train of where I'm at but yeah. I mean it's beautiful it's all it, all the way through the writing is beautiful and re- yeah, the imagery is really really rich and it's you know absolutely evocative stuff so there's no problem with that side of things, but just the pu- the sheer number of people, of you know, the, of yeah, there's characters. a lot going on. Interesting because it's not dense in the sense of a, a lot of other works of um, classic yeah. literature, where it's all like heavy description or like like you don't feel like or like a lot of philosophy or something. You don't feel like no, there's, there's a lot going that. on. It's not heavy. It's just but there's it's a lot heavy. of plot. Yeah, there's a lot um, just... moving it forward. It's just it's more keeping up with the number of characters. And, and the, the characters and the action, because they're on the go the entire time. So it, it's definitely challenging. And I just cannot imagine how he imagined so much. <laughs> I just, yeah. It's extraordinary. I mean, it really is extraordinary. I mean, I had not appreciated that until we started this series, yeah. honestly. It's quite extraordinary. I think the reason that it's striking us so much in this book as opposed to the other ones, because there's been a lot going on throughout in all of them. But yeah. in this one, I think it was even more, a little, like a little bit more confusing because so much was happening. Because yes. we are following, so we're talking about chastity in this one. Yes. And we are yes. following our first female knight, which is very yes. cool. It, that is Mark. very cool. Yep. Yeah. And she's great. But my one complaint for this canto, this book rather, is so much but actually doesn't focus on her like she no, has her own that's right, the right she's just there she's the thread all the time there of course yeah and we know that we and we know her presence we understand her presence but you're right we sidebar constantly to then so oh sidebars. focus now on these two all right and then on mm-hmm. this one and and then you remember oh yeah that's right it's actually really all about her but it's not very strange. Yeah, yeah, but there's so yeah. much just going on, and they're all like, um, they're all still coming back to the idea of chastity. So they are all, all these yes. sub stories are all about other pairs of lovers and um, yes, temptations as usual. Yeah. Um, and that's <laughs> they have interesting stories in themselves. And the side stories, like well, quite that's a lot the thing. Everybody's are, story is fun. actually interesting, and everybody's but story is. But also, Rosie, I think that kind of strange familiarity. So. Mm-hmm. Each story as you're reading it, you know, as you get into another character, you go, oh, I kind of know a little bit about this. I've heard of a bit about this before. So it's, yeah. it's it's really interesting, isn't it? When we talk about chastity, at the very beginning of the book, you know, it does the, um, before it gets into the characters, it does a bit of an introduction yeah, thing in the from Norton. the author's talking. Um, yeah. No, no, I mean, I mean, in the actual book, like there, oh, there's in a the book called okay. Canto 1. Oh, yes, um, yes, Where the author yes. talks to you about what's going to happen in the canto. And yeah. um, he, this one's really important because we're talking about chastity in the time of Queen Elizabeth and, you know, she, she's known as the Virgin Queen. At, at the time that he was writing, I think she is quite old, so it's not um, so yeah, much Yeah, like that's a it's towards the end of her reign, isn't it? Yeah. So the stark kind of contrast between paintings of her where she's got that yeah. white paint and she's obviously, at, you know, towards the latter part of her life and this idea yeah. of a fairy in the first place, because yeah. you think of fairies as, you know, young, young and, yeah. and yeah, and agile. And yet, Sprightly. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's and, <laughs> yeah, That's right. That's right. So it's sort of <laughs> in itself a little bit sort of strange that he's kind of making her out, <laughs> you know, or sort of appealing to her thoughts of herself or desire for herself to always be young. I think... Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, back when she was young, it, obviously it was such a big political thing for her to, like, if she did take a, um, a husband and mm. lose her virginity, that would be such a big decision. So mm. in the past, talking about chastity would have been more like yes. a political yeah. statement. But here yes. it's it's more just praising her for having remained for doing a virgin. It. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it says, um, Sith, it is enshrined in my sovereign's breast and formed so lively in each perfect part that to all ladies which have it professed, need but behold the portrait of her heart if portrayed it might be by any living art so it's saying that um she's like the portrait of um like she she perfection is yeah like she, she equals what you're Cassidy and his, yeah. um, something for all ladies to aspire to i thought that was interesting because like, i mean obviously all these virtues he's probably assuming that um that the queen has them yeah <laughs> things like that but Cassidy yeah the is assumption is one that, that she's just got all of them but yeah this is yeah. like the really this like is a the bear, this is well this one has impact on everybody i suppose yeah. yeah and then before we get into the actual cantos that we have in the um norton i just think britama is the coolest person ever in book one i think it was when we were talking i was saying spencer was trying was taking something that had already been done by um ariosto in italian mm. um and that the difference that i've seen so far is that ariosto was a more funny um, which I still mm. think is the case. I don't really see much humor here. But he also had a lot of female worries and things. And I was wondering whether we were going to get that from yeah. here. And we do finally. So that's good. Um, yeah. Bouchamart is interesting. She reminds me a lot of Brienne of Tarth um, from Game of Thrones. I will, you don't know who it is, Mum, but I, I don't know who that is because I haven't <laughs> watched Game of Thrones or read Game of Thrones. I'll show you later. But yeah. it's like this, this constant surprise that a woman um, can be better than all the men in. Mm. Uh, in in battle so um Brishma at the very beginning when she comes in she she beats Sir Guyon mm. <laughs> she comes across Sir Guyon she like um beats him in like a quick I think she like unforces him or something um <laughs> it doesn't and then they realize that that they're friends so they don't actually like do any big battle or anything like that but then there's just constant at the very beginning it's like constantly she comes across groups of people who are bullying some other poor figure and she will take them all on by herself Mm. <laughs> and and win and she's yeah she's, she's very fearless, cool in she's as fearless as she is steadfast isn't she she's mm-hmm. she's like and her the, whole um her whole quest because we know each of them have quests a quest um, her quest is to find the man that she loves who she's never met and his name is article which is arthur's equal mm. and i think he's, he's supposed to be like yeah as good as arthur the man. <laughs> yeah but she doesn't she doesn't okay. fulfill her quest right not in this book she does later on um, yeah so yeah it, it's the first time that we have a book where that where it doesn't end with whichever her getting, we're focusing on her, yeah, getting to yeah. The, yeah so she fulfills like some other side quest but she yeah. doesn't fulfill her main quest well she has um, many she has multiple mini quests let's face it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah she's she's full of success <laughs> but she's I, not I, actually yeah and i'd actually point. say and definitely task driven rosie <laughs> like she's yeah always oh, on she, a yeah, mission. she like decides she's gonna um go off like be a knight sort of trains up and all this stuff because yeah. she's told by merlin um which is yeah merlin comes into this early on uh, mm. <laughs> and he tells her that she is going to she's going to be with article and mm. that their children will be this like long line of kings and stuff so she becomes aware of how important her she is or her children will be to england's history England. yeah yeah um so then her whole quest really is all about her country yes <laughs> and, yes. and like further in the line it's not really like she's never met this guy she just no. says that she loves him, never met him <laughs> so it's really interesting for us especially now to be kind of looking at that idea isn't it in, in, yeah, light, of, well, in light of the queen's death and the next elizabeth yeah yes it's kind of really very interesting to be reading and he right stops now. um he actually does reference the succession issue mm. um briefly because when merlin's talking about like who's going to come next if he's foreseen all the kings and queens he sort of does this awkward like stopping at after mm. elizabeth mm. um like oh we don't want to go there no. <laughs> And Is that and then he comes that's, back. that's rude. It's, it's, it's a little bit, um, yeah, like I guess warning us that um, that's going to be an issue. Like we're getting to um, Elizabeth being a bit older now, and she doesn't have any heirs, and then it's like, oh, okay, yeah. So Moving we won't along. let's not go there because that's the much discussed and yeah. definitely a point yeah. of massive tension. So, well, let's look at the beginning of Canto Six. Yeah. So in the north, we have Canto Six, Eleven, and Twelve. Yes. And so, so six is is, is explaining the about birth of the twins. No, it's about the birth of the twins, right? Yeah. So once again, we have a, a side story. Um, yes. And this is the birth of 
the twins, Belle, Phoebe, and Amaret. And, and the course, nature the of their birth. So they're born too. Um, her name is Chrysogeny. So yeah. she's a fairy. So Chrysogeny is a fairy. So she's mystical. She's not mm -hmm. mortal. And she has the story of the birth of the twins is in itself interesting. So it's kind of a bit similar to the idea of, well, it's the Immaculate Conception, essentially. Or not, not exactly. It's not the Immaculate Conception. It's a conception that takes place. I mean, it is, but it takes place without a man, but it's yes. the sun's beams. Basically, she's ravished yeah, by the sun's so beams. Weird. Yeah, like yeah. they pierce her body and impregnate her. So it's basically nature. It's the force of nature, and nature basically yeah. impregnates the woman. So she's just, poor thing, she's had a bit of a bath or a swim. She's and she tired, her, and she's um, having a lie down. She just is having a rest. That's right. And then the sun shines upon her body, and the and beams are powerful, while she's asleep, the beams impregnate into her skin. I and mean, where is that part? It's kind of amazing, that little description. Yeah, here we go. I think it's in, do we call them stanzas, Rosie? Yeah. Why it's not? the seventh one. And it basically says, um, you know, that she, she laid herself on, to sleep okay. on the ground. And then yeah. upon her fell all naked bare displayed. The sunbeams bright upon her body played. So that it's like they're taunting her. Being through former bathing mollified and pierced into her womb, where they embayed with so sweet sense and secret power unspied that in her pregnant flesh they shortly fructified, like literally mm -hmm. bore fruit, like so yeah. the whole fruit metaphor, like yes. ripening. Oh, I, I thought that was like, wow, okay. But then, of course, what does she do in response to that? So the poor woman. She's impregnated innocently while lying down and by the sun, by nature. And so she runs away. Like she runs because she goes into the forest, doesn't she? Because she needs to hide from her terrible disgrace. So just being yeah, pregnant is a terrible sad. act. Yeah. It's yeah. called shame and foul disgrace. Even though she's got, it says, albeit her conscience is guiltless, wrong. like she hasn't got anything to be guilty about, but she just goes into the wilderness mm to um, make sure no one knows of her terrible dishonour, like she's so worried, you know, about it. Yeah. Obviously, that's positioning, you know, the sexual act as this terrible thing and yeah, it's virtue as Even being, though there was no sex, we're still yeah. wor worried We're about still it. just being pregnant <laughs> is bad. So even yeah. if you've been ravished by the sun's beams and impregnated against your will, <laughs> then you're still a fallen woman, basically. So she must hide. So she runs into... The wilderness, you know, the forest wilderness. And then that's where we get interesting. Then we have to have her bear the twins, actually have the twins. A lot happens before then. Well, there's the uh, the goddesses find out about it. Yes, which and the goddesses we speak of are Venus and Venus. Diana. And so Diana's the one that I always thought was the coolest. She's the huntress. Because she's the huntress. She is the cool one. She's the powerful, strong, physical one. Absolutely. Yes. And Venus is... The love one. Venus is the one with Cupid. So she's yeah. just, she's also hanging out in the wilderness because isn't she looking for Cupid, her lost son? Yeah, he's been lost somehow. Him. So she's she's there for a reason. He's, she's always, there. he's always running away and wreaking havoc. <laughs> Cupid, not, that naughty little yeah. guy, naughty little cherub yeah. guy with the arrows. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so he's out there in the wilderness and she's looking for him. And then why is Diana in the wilderness? Well, she's the huntress. Just be oh yes, so she's looking for beasts and things. Yeah. So then she's those there. two are they're out there, and then what happens next is we've got to give birth to these to these little twins. Yeah, and the birth is really um just non-eventful. Like yep. she bore she just without him pain, that which she conceived without him pleasure. Yeah. So, so where the, because there was no pleasure, her. because because there's, there's no, no, no pleasure, pain. there's also no pain. <laughs> which that's that's interesting because that's that line in that song. Fine line between pleasure and pain. Yeah, and isn't that the whole thing in the Bible is supposed to be that, um, like that uh, women's periods and yes. childbirth and stuff is painful because of Eve? Yes, like it's just exactly it's like punishment. Orphan. Yeah, as punishment. Basic punishment. So, ba so the, yeah. anyway, the twins slide out, but in order, one before the other. So then we've got these twins. One goes with Venus and one goes with um, Diana. Diana. And, uh, the one that goes with Venus. Bell, Fee Bell is Phoebe. Yeah, that yeah. So Belle Phoebe goes with Diana, right? Yeah, Belle Phoebe goes with Diana, and Amaret goes with uh, Venus. And yes. Amaret is important because she's going to come into the book later on. Yes. And Amaret yeah. goes um, into the garden. Uh, into the Garden of Adonis. Yes. 
and the garden's beautiful, really beautiful. And the description and of the garden is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's really, um, gorgeous. these two twins are supposed to be like the two sides of womanhood, which yes. is you can only be a virgin or a mother. So yes. it's supposed to be that um, one of them is brought up to be pure and virginal and the other one is brought up to be womanly and nurturing yeah. in the yeah. other sense. So um, the one that goes into the garden is so the one that's, that's supposed to be um like that's, of the nature it's amaretto, amaretto which makes me just think of the drink amaretto yeah <laughs> <laughs> well she gets called various things as well because what they do a lot of time with their names is um like they change the endings of them so yeah. she's amaretto sometimes and then she's amaretto so then we get this beautiful garden b- massive description you know huge imagery beautiful flowers it's all very yep. lush and divine then time. we get a bad entry in the garden yes time Great. wicked time Between all the rest is wicked time Yes. All things, uh, all their glory to the ground done flings where they do wither and are foully marred. And he's full of yeah. malice. He's horrible. He doesn't all release things he's full of malice. Time and to the end do draw. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that is supposed to be a reflection on Elizabeth as well? Yep. She's getting old. Yep. Time's the big problem. Because they were really, really focused on this idea, you know, on issues of mortality, weren't they? So, yeah, because it does go on about time for a fair bit, actually. Okay. But I think then. it's interesting because they, um, at the same time, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> the, you know, we know everything dies and um, that's, you know, expected. And it's very sad we've got to be yeah. garden. But it's a cycle. Like, we know that yeah. the garden will come back. Yes. So, um, but, and then we get a bit of, Sweet pleasure, don't we? Bit of remembering of all the good times. Oh, then Psyche comes in, Rosie. Yeah, his true love, fair Psyche with him plays. Yes. This is Adonis. Adonis and Psyche are the lovers. And then at the end, it just comes back to she's got to save, um, she's got to look for Scudamore. Scud- yeah, I don't know how you say his name. Scudamore or Scudamore? Someone tell us. I, I don't know. Yes, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's the one that um, Amaret is going to be in love with. And yep. that's where we're going to pick up for um, Cantos 11 and 12 because yeah. Britomart is going to need to help. So Sc- Scudamore, Scudamore. On his, whatever his God. name is. Yes, <laughs> that guy. On his, on his quest to save Amaret. So basically the the canto, then there's a, there are a couple of cantos that happen in between that I have not read. Mm. So It's, again, more side things. So um, the two big events um, that happen in the book outside of these cantos is um, we get a lot of Florimel, um, who is basically like beauty. She's beauty, yep. but she's fleeting. And, yep. um, and she's literally fleeing the entire book, basically. She's running away from lusty men the entire book. Yeah. So, so poor Florimel, it's not her fault. She's beautiful, but she's constantly being um, chased by men. And it's yeah, basically just various stories around that. And then there's um, this really old, awful, jealous man who lives in a castle with his very young, beautiful wife. And someone comes and uh, is a guest at the castle and goes against all, you know, the big honour code of like how you be a guest in someone's house um, Mm. that they would be gone in this time. Mm. He um, violates that code by seducing the wife. And she gets like taken off into the forest and basically then goes, starts having sex with like all sorts of animals and <laughs> beasts and things. And this man um, goes a bit crazy because he's lost his wife, essentially. So, yeah, yeah it's um, again about chastity, sex, all of this throughout. It's just another side story. So, so but then Bridgema ends up, and by the time she rejoins us in Canto 11, or we rejoin her in Canto 11, now <laughs> it's about. Um, now we we actually this is the one where we go to um, the fiery castle. Yeah, so this is um, basically first Figamore and Amaret are in love, and they did get married. So they're they're married, but when before they were able to um, to consummate their marriage, um, Amaret is carried away by this evil guy, um, wizard guy called um Vizirin. again don't know how to pronounce these names um, and he basically like whisks her away into this house that is kind of like I mean I'm really picturing it's also really appropriate for this time of year I'm really picturing like a full-on haunted mansion kind of thing mm, um mm. really a dark creepy very dark fire, and creepy place devilish. Yeah. um so then poor Scudamore is desperately looking for her because he really wants sex yes yeah, so <laughs> what's going to the marriage and he hasn't him. been able to have sex yeah, so yeah. he's driven by that, but she's not. She's driven by, you know, pure. She's 
So yeah, Britta Martin is not driven by sex. She's driven by like her ultimate purpose. So the so, castle is like a test of that virtue. Yeah, she comes yeah. across him. He tells her that um, you know, his love has been taken away. And she goes, oh, fine, I'll help you, as always. <laughs> Probably a little less reluctantly than I'm saying. But yeah, once again, she comes to the rescue. Um, and she goes to this castle. And the porch of the castle or house or whatever it is, is on fire. Yes. It is literally like entering hell. Like there are flames around yes, it. it. It's hell. Um, yeah. Somehow she manages she to get through. Go. Yeah. It's no problem getting through it. Um, but Scudamot has issues. He cannot. Poor man. He just wants to have his life. But anyway. So um, her ample shield she threw before her face and her sword's point directing forward right assailed the flame, which the which eftsoons gave place and itself did divide with equal space. That through she passed as a thunderbolt, pierces the yielding air, and doth displace the soaring clouds into sad showers, emolt, which is melted, so to yield the flames and did their force revolt. So she, it all kind of, um, it's like a force field thing with her shield that it all kind of just clears right. away from her. Yeah, yeah. But Don't I love that word, if soons. If soons, yeah. It it's feels one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love yeah. that. If soons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but like he can't do it. He he no. just fails. It's, he back retire or scorched and pitifully burnt. <laughs> he's he's yeah, a pitiful scorched. fail, and she and she's the, yeah. the hero again. And then when she comes inside, she sees um all of these like depictions of Cupid in various like battles tapestries. And, yeah, yeah, tapestries of like of him and or in his various forms and and various like deeds, I suppose. Um, I love that bit. Just all about the glist- the glistering walls were hung with warlike spoils and with victorious praise of mighty conquerors and captains strong, which were Willowham captive in their days to cruel love and wrought their own decays. Their swords and spears were broke. Uh, it's great, isn't it? I love all it. the different shapes he takes. So he's he's got he takes the shape of a swan, um, a satyr. Oh yeah, that's right. Because leader, the story of leader and the swan comes in here too. Yeah, it's all the different images of Cupid, essentially. Yeah, the Yates um, poetry. There it is. That goes on for a little bit. That yeah. now like a lion, now like a stag, now like a falcon. <laughs> all these different um, things that he turns into uh, yes. when he's doing his his Cupid things. Yeah, and then his keeper things, and that goes like pretty much throughout. Talks about his blindfolds, you know, his bow and arrow, as we normally do talk about with Cupid. Oh, yeah, then the other thing what? that she sees. Yeah, what about this bit? Yeah, go on. Yeah, I know you're getting to it. Go on. Is the, the um, writing everywhere. I knew you were coming to that. Be bold, be bold, be bold. That bit. And, but yeah, then be I'm bold, like, be, be not bold. too bold. Be, be bold. <laughs> be not too bold. Yeah, so it goes, be bold, be bold, be bold. Oh, yeah, but not too much. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah it's that kind of creepy like, can you imagine like a you're going into this like abandoned like it's completely empty this big haunted hall. house yeah 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 like a haunted house and it's got all of these um like weird tapestries showing this guy turning into all these different um hmm. beasts and things and then and all then this writing this appears weird writing yeah saying hmm. be bold like I think that's really creepy yeah <laughs> so I love that imagery I thought that was very yeah. fun yeah, and very. Is it, well, this you, you like this more than the other canto. I, you know, I was all about. I liked the canto in the nice garden. I like the dark stuff. Yeah, you <laughs> you go for this. Yes, I think also because you get a lot of um, you know, the uh, flower imagery, um, like gardens and all of that sort of thing. You see it a lot in this time period, and we saw it a lot in the medieval period as well. And I feel like we've had a lot of it, so I'm quite excited that we're getting to the darker imagery now. Which we I guess really seen. Yeah, I know, but yeah. I yeah, I still do love that. I do love more flowers. Like, like but anyway, like yes, it, look, there's yes. no denying it's it's not boring. That's for sure. It's no, full-on. not at all. This is where it gets Canto cool. Twelve. Like it, it feels way more modern than you know it actually is. I suppose. Um, yeah. It feels like Doctor Faustus, like like Edgar Allan Poe, like yes, <laughs> yes. You've got the, these kind of vibes. So um, yeah, it is about it's magic and the doors are clapping and yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. So it's yeah. a like a and there's mist. Yeah, yeah. It's called the mask of Cupid, but mask here represents um, it's like a court mask, which mm. is a dramatic presentation with allegorical personages and emblematic clothing and props. So it's like a procession essentially. And we get so we get them all in a row. So we get harmony and fancy and desire. So yeah, they just come in, and they just which come is in much so like that um, medieval, you know, the medieval. Yeah, the that is exactly from Faustus, isn't it? 
yeah, the procession of the sins. Yeah, yeah. the mystery place. Kind of like yeah. that. So you have to imagine Britomar is standing here in this empty hall and suddenly the doors fly open and all and, these people were one masks. by one. Like, yeah, this, like five and, and one after the other. Yeah. Music, like it's just suddenly all this stuff happens. Um, and they're all not really like speaking, they're just doing this procession with no context. And, and she's like, What so is going down, on? Down, so, and the way they're all dressed. So, danger yeah. is clothed in a ragged weed made of bear's skin that him more mm-hmm. dreadful made, yet his own face was dreadful. <laughs> Strange horror, deformed, grisly shade, a net in one hand and a rustic blade. So, kind of like the Grim Reaper. They're all dressed in really like extreme costumes. Yeah. So we have painted plumes. All sorts of things. I know and the then, things we got are really interesting. And then, I mean, grief and fury. So grief yeah. is just so all sad, as you'd expect. Fancy, with a dump. desire, doubt, danger, fear, yeah. hope, semblance and suspect. And suspect. Grief and fury. Yeah, fury is an interesting one. Fury is really cool. It, Rags, naked night. She, she did appear with ghastly looks and dreadful. What is what dreary head? Dreary head. Yeah, For from her back, her garments, she did tear. And from her head off rent her snarled hair. Ugh. Yeah, because she's so furious, she's pulling her own hair out, and in her right and hand, ripping off fire, her clothes, throwing fire as well. Oh, she sounds disgusting. I mean, and it's then, just like so extreme, and it even talks about like st- a stormy whirlwind blue. So it's it really is like it's early horror. It's definitely horror. It? It's really really yeah. scary. Yeah. It's good yeah. to read it in daytime, <laughs> so you don't get too scared. <laughs> Reproach, yeah. repentance, shame. I mean, they're all there. Everybody's there. Strife, and anger. then this poor. Poor lady, so um, who they're taking. So they've got this procession and then there's a woman with them who yes. has a, is her breast all nat- naked as net ivory without yeah. a dawn of gold or silver bright. And it says a wide wound therein and entrenched deep with a knife. A cursed so she's just got a knife, a knife hanging out of her. Yeah, Ugh. so she's been stabbed in the heart essentially. And then later mm. they cut her heart out. So I think this is Amaret, right? It's a, yeah. Um, yeah. she's been taken by these creepy people (laughs) they're doing this kind of like it's very ritualistic right it's like a a creepy very very it is and they've got her heart (laughs) and yeah she's like tied around with iron bands onto a brazen killer in blood from her dying heart this magician is like has these wicked books it says unawares it's struck into her snowy chest the little drops empurpled her fair breast exceeding wrath therein the virgin grew or be the wound was nothing deep impressed and fiercely for her mortal blade she drew to give him reward for such outrage drew. So um, Britomart attacks him. So mightily she smote him that to the ground he fell half dead. <laughs> and they only She only stops herself from killing him because Amaret needs, um, needs him to reverse the spell. So yes. they show some mercy at that point so that they can reverse the spell. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, finally she, it all gets undone because of Britomart's strength. Yes. And the, when the curse is undone, we get again more like horror magic imagery. She perceived the house to quake and all the doors to rattle round about. Yet all that did not her dismayed make, nor slack her fretful hand for danger's doubt, but still with steadfast eye and courage stout abode to wait what end would come of all. So she still, she wasn't afraid. No. <laughs> no. Going crazy. So, yeah, and eventually, yeah, so she, um, Britomart wins, as we yes, expect. Yes, she does, of course. Britomart of course she does. To- and then it's just waiting outside, like, just <laughs> 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 wondering what's going on. She didn't make it in. Yeah, then they get uh, this nice reunion at the end where they embrace each other so much that they become one. One. Yeah. Here to become one. I know, that's kind of lovely, isn't it? Yeah, but very sad for poor Britomart because she still hasn't found her love. So she goes through all of that. All um, of that and still hasn't got anything yet. But she does eventually find him. I mean, spoiler. Spoiler alert, Rosie. Yeah. Well, I'm glad she does after all this. She must be exhausted. A lot of effort has to be said. Yeah. But it is a really cool notion, isn't it, to um, subvert the whole idea of the ma- masculine knight on the quest and, and yeah. have a woman. It is it is really interesting. I mean, he and was really great. Because Elizabeth, because Elizabeth sure would, yeah, was. have that picture of her in the um, armour as well, so... That's I'm sure it. it was that. I'm sure it was. But, you know, how still uh, that doesn't take away from how extraordinary that is ahead of its time. <laughs> in some ways. <laughs> yeah, in some ways, yes. No, I, mm. I really like it. Um, I, I like Britomart. I wish we had more time. Me with too. Her. That's my only. So I feel like, yeah, I liked the ending of this book 
but the I wouldn't say it was my favorite in terms for throughout you know the part that I didn't enjoy as much was that we have all these side stories Mm. um because and I think yeah each of the side stories is fine on their own um but I feel like we were distracted from the story of Britta Mark yeah and I would have liked and and you wanted to know more about her yes and the stories are a little repetitive like um it's different people different stories in themselves but we know the outcome we know the point like it is um it's always going to be the chastity is going to win um every time (laughs) and they're going to be punished there's no surprise element that's right so (laughs) Uh, yeah, there's, and it is an awful lot. It is a lot. Yeah. It's, it's huge. I would say it's not my favourite book for that reason, but but Canto 12 might be one of my favourite cantos from the entire yeah. thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, excellent. Anyway, it look, really, I, again, keep saying the same thing, but I'm very, very glad to have read it because I just know I would never have thought about it no. at all. And this is basically it. Like, we've basically done... Mm. it now because we're only going to be looking at the mutability, mutability. Categories, which are quite yeah. different. we've done all of the books that we're going to be looking at for the fairy queen and i have gone ahead and finished as you can see from my um tabs and i did really enjoy it so i would say it is worth reading the full thing if you have the time okay which is very long so but it was it was a good read yeah really yeah, I'm very pleased we did it. And then we go from, so we'll do the mutability, we'll, we'll look at mutability cantos next. And then we're going to need to return because we um, we got so excited to start the Fairy Queen that we actually forgot. We actually, we skipped a bit, bit of an autumn. Oh, who did we skip? <laughs> we skipped, it was still Spencer, but he has, um, before he did the Fairy Queen, he has the, fe- the Shepherd's Calendar. Oh, And so we okay. cover that. Um, so okay. we're going to come, after we do the Fairy Queen, we will come back to, the shepherd's calendar and then i think there are a couple more poems then there are a couple at. of more you've got amoretti and epithalamine epithalamine <laughs> i can't say that it's time to it. <laughs> those guys yeah but i'm really i really like spencer so i'm glad that Same. we um i'm very glad i found yeah, and i'm also glad i'm really fully letting him go after the fairy queen as well because i i just really like his writing Same. It's very nice yep yeah it's been good really good rose i thought it would be the most challenging um that we've done but I'm not sure it is, you know, because mm. or at least in my mind so far, the Fairy Queen has been le- less challenging than some other ones because it has a, a plot. Yes. Like, yes. Has stuff that happens. I feel like I actually struggle more with just basic poetry, <laughs> maybe. Mm. Um, or we did have a lot of like religious discourse and stuff. I feel like that yeah, was maybe. And more- that, that's probably harder to to engage with than I mean this, this um, is a, a full saga with everything you can imagine thrown in yeah so, so even though I thought it would be really challenging because of the language I feel like because I was able to, to read it with the audiobook I eventually got really used to it as well you get like, used you, to it you, get, you, you do you do I was I listening actually, again to the audio it's no it, the audiobook is funny how you do sort of start absorbing it don't you yeah and I did listen to a bit more. Yeah, this into morning, the rhythm, just, you know. Yeah, and you that's just, right. Like, it is a rhythm. Like, soon, stuff like that. Like these words just um, start and being you just part of the so normal, much. part of the vernacular, but, and we just go yeah. with it, and it's good. Yeah, I know that's what's fun. That's what's really fun. Yeah, I couldn't so, stop myself. I had to keep reading. So yeah, I have, I have now gone to the end. So I would definitely recommend for anyone who. Um, I mean, I really want to hear anyone who hmm. has read the full thing and um, what they think their favorite parts are I would love yes. to hear that but also anyone who has only read like book one or something for university I would really encourage if you liked book one keep, t- I would keep going continue yeah because it's so good it's worth reading and you know like I'm very against the concept of being afraid of big books because I often find they're the best ones <laughs> you have more time <laughs> big can be better yes it definitely can hmm. I, I like either really long books or really short books I feel like either of them takes a lot of skill yes so where yes that, i mean i that i don't like books that are like normal length but you know i feel like it, it's a lot harder to do a very short concise story and to keep a reader's interest in a long story yes so i often find that those are the ones i give five stars to all the time mm. long books and short books mm. <laughs> yeah side note that anyway are you happy that you have now pretty much almost read the fairy Absolutely. queen Absolutely. Brilliant. And we look right, forward well, to next week to or next. Finishing it up interval. officially next week with the mutability cantos. Yes. Yes. Thanks for watching, everyone. Yes. Thanks, everyone. See you again next time. Bye, Bye. everyone.